When my daughter Hope was young, she was a straight-A student. I was a normal, regular kid. I loved to do theater. I loved soccer and cheerleading. Hope was filled with innocence, joy, and ambition. When I was 14, my whole life changed. My daughter Hope was kidnapped by sex traffickers. Hope was forced into prostitution. It all started because I posted on a social media site that I hated my mother. A woman messaged me back telling me that I'd go stay with her and we'd go partying. She showed up within the next 45 minutes and I was gone. The suspects target girls who post comments about a negative home life on social media sites and chat rooms. The 14 year olds, oh, I hate my mom. She doesn't understand me. I can't wait to get out of here. That's how police say William Jacobs and Shayla Williams met a young North Texas victim who was just 14 years old. I walked into the motel room. I see a man sitting in the corner. The first thing that came out of his mouth was, take off your clothes so we can take these pictures. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna take my clothes off. <sighs> he said, so you wanna do this the hard way? He hit me a couple times and after that I was out like a light. I woke up in the closet. The closet that I was in was about the size of me right here. After they took me out the closet, they took crushed up pills and they forced them down my throat. After they force fed me pills, I would try to move my body, but I couldn't pick myself up. They made me feel catatonic. After they drugged me, I had my first client. Hope says she knew if she wanted to make it, she had to find a way to cope. In order to survive my kidnapping, I had to create an alter ego. They told me that my name wasn't Hope anymore, it was Sophia, so that's the name that I took on. Sophia's the girl that walks with her head high. She was the one who dealt with all the clients and the Johns and the beatings. When I was with the traffickers, they never fed me. My source of food would be picking it out of the trash, drinking the water from the faucet. I bit my nails a lot. One time, I was taking a shower, and he busted it open and beat me with the belt because I locked the door. The couple is accused of trafficking the teen in eight different states in only a three-week period. The traffickers made me sleep with men in each state, over 20 men a day. I could never be hope again after that. I was never going to be the same girl. Hope's mother says her daughter's terrifying ordeal claimed more than one victim. She says at times she feels just as traumatized as her daughter. She also says before today, Hope has never wanted to share her story or any specific details about what happened. Hope's not the only victim. I'm a victim. During the time that Hope was gone, I felt lost. It took a lot of strain on my job my relationship with my other kids. It was an emotional roller coaster. I try to make up for things financially for Hope to compensate for what she had gone through when I really couldn't even afford it. Like, she called me, she's like, Mom, I need to come up there. And I'm like, are you coming to school? Are you gonna finish your school? Because you know that's the only reason why I will let you back in, but you're not willing to do that. So then you call me and you tell me, you're hungry, you need money. If I had it like that, maybe. But when I'm 60 years old, is she gonna still come to me and say, I need $200? What's gonna happen when something happens to me and I don't have the financial means to, to take care of me? Don't we all have to work for our retirement? Don't we all have to save for our, our future? And if I'm constantly giving it out, don't you think that I'm a little bit depressed? Don't you think I'm a little bit discouraged? Don't you think that I'm a little bit worried about me? Is that selfish? I love hope. I love her, but she's not the only victim. Hope, I'm glad you're here. Israel, I'm glad you're here. You seem to be very traumatized by what happened to your daughter. Yeah. Tell me about that. I didn't know the things that she shared with you. Traumatized in the manner that it was difficult. Um, throughout the whole proceedings, you know, it was about helping her and wanting to do the right thing, but every time anybody reached out to her to help her when she was returned, if it was not under the circumstances that she felt that was deemed appropriate or that she wanted, she would resist. So it became a struggle. 